Listen, I think it's fantastic that we're in an anime season where you can claim something as being the best or your favorite romance of a season, and you're bound to get at least two or three answers that are different than your own because that's how good of a season this is, not just for anime in general, but specifically for that romance or rom-com genre. But I've been no stranger to saying this is my personal favorite, not only just of the season, but of just anime, romance anime in the past few years. It's clicked with me on a level that is so good that it's risen to being one of my all-time favorite romance anime. I'm loving the dynamic, and an episode like this, this moment right here, is basically the best example of why I think this show is so exceptional. Not only does the main duo, Akane and Yamada, have such beautiful chemistry, and they're slowly but surely getting to that point of admitting that they both, out loud, want to date each other, even though Yamada kind of did that last week. The fact that you fully introduce what is the love triangle of this show. They initially baited us in with Runa, potentially having that younger girl, you know, looking at the older boy being toxic, and they quickly established that she wasn't going to be like that, and it was a lot different. The fact that you are really, some, like, saying, okay, not only does seemingly the girl that he sits next to, his classmate, I'm pretty sure that's the same girl that we've gotten flashbacks of, of wanting to be in a relationship, and even if say they are different characters, this episode confirms that classmate, the only reason she thinks probably they're not in a relationship is because Yamada has no interest in romance. And the fact that Yamada is clearly showing signs of being different around someone like Akane, the fact that you can have a love triangle in a show like this, and we know damn well, it's not gonna go toxic. Maybe she won't like Akane? Maybe she will try to ask him out again, but at the end of the day, we know that this show isn't about taking cliches and stretching it for six episodes. Look at Runa, look at what they did in two episodes with what should have been super toxic, super, oh my god, we hate this character. She's turned into one of the best little sister tropes, and can't even call her a trope, best little sister characters in recent memory. And this is why moments like these, introducing a love triangle, something I'm really not a big fan of, I love it in a show like this. And to me, that's why it, it, it is the best romance, not only of this season, but in recent memory for me. Now, full live reaction to episode 9 is available on my Patreon if you do want to see my full uncut thoughts and me gush in real time. So, consider supporting and heading on over there. Now, this episode was great. We have, it kind of, you can sum it down to as Akane really starts working at her job. She's getting sick. We are seeing the chemistry and the aftermath of someone saying that you're out of my league. And by the end of the episode, our prince comes in. And honestly, as much as we want to say, girl, this isn't you thinking straight, because she's thinking about how smart she is. Like, hey, I don't want to take the bus. I don't want to get people sick, so I'll walk. Yes, this is the smart girl. Or, oh, you know, I'll order takeout after crashing into the bikes. Had she not been delirious and went outside, I'm pretty sure our boy would have kept walking unless he already was planning to go over there. So let's just say, you know what, her delirious mind, it allowed for our prince to come in, stop the bike from falling over, and for her to think that she's dreaming and she's being selfish. I totally expected that she was going to sneak a kiss in. Now, granted, She's a very considerate girl. She wears a mask when she's sick so she doesn't spread her germs to people. She doesn't want to go on a bus with crowded people because she doesn't want to get people sick. So you might want to say, well, there's no way she would kiss someone and get them sick as well. But if she thinks it's a dream and she's already being selfish, I mean, in a dream, would Dream Akane sneak a kiss? I would like to think so. But either way, as soon as you see her sick, you know damn well our boys gotta come over to her apartment and take care of her. I was just expecting, and I'm sure I'm not alone, that he would knock on the door, there'd be no answer, he'd try calling, there'd be no answer, and then he'd open the door because he'd be concerned and he'd notice it would be unlocked and she'd be on the floor so he'd carry her to her bed. That's what usually would happen in a moment like this, but her, you know, being like, oh, I don't want to get people sick, I need to eat certain foods, we get the scene we end up getting, and it's fantastic. It's really interesting when you think about what they're doing with a so-called love triangle in this moment, because it's pretty damn clear this classmate has feelings. But I like the fact that imagine growing up with someone, having feelings for someone, and being fully convinced that the only reason you're probably not in a relationship, not only because you have similar interests and hobbies, is because he's not the type of person to get in a relationship. He shows no interest. I mean, look at the school. Every single girl, and honestly half the guys, seem to be just infatuated with him. So it's not like it's just like she asked once back in the day and then gave up. No, it's like imagine going to school with someone year after year, being friends with them, and looking and be like he has no interest for any female. So of course, you're not going to 
ruin your friendship by, you know, just saying, why don't you go out with me, this or that? No, you're just going to accept this is all you're going to get. And then he starts hanging out with this college girl who basically is making him light up in ways you've never seen him do. It's obviously going to sting and you're probably going to get jealous. You're probably going to get envious. And with her being the new member of the guild, obviously some drama could be there. But if I'm basing what they did with Runa, who, honestly, that should have ended way more toxic. We've adjusted her into being this adorable little sister. They may not be best friends. They may not like each other. But, honestly, all the cards are saying that there shouldn't be drama in the way that she tries to break them apart or she hates her guts. She might be disappointed and a little envious, but that seems to be the direction they're trying to build up. And everything we've seen from our boy Yamada points to him... If he eventually does admit that he wants to be in a relationship, it's going to be with Akane, and everything we're seeing with her, hell, she thinks she's dreaming of being carried off by him. If that's not a confirmation that she's in love, I mean, what else is? I think this show is brilliant. I think this show is absolutely perfect. It blends everything I love about romance into a type of romance anime that you don't normally see. I'm a sucker for when characters play video games in a show but don't get transported or teleported in, but we see it in this cute style as if they actually have been teleported, but they just design it with the character designs and everything to feel more interesting than just having a camera pulled out and watching them click on their keyboards, right? So the fact that you have that kind of video game s mechanic, which isn't super in-depth in terms of like we see it all the time, but it's enough to say like this is like their hangout zone. And then you have all these side characters, all these brilliant characters that develop past the initial, oh, Ada's gonna just be this, you know, this weirdo who's like super like positive and bubbly and plays as this girl avatar. No, like he's a genuine bro who not only looks after his little sis, but also is like a really good friend to someone like Yamada. Runa turned from being someone who tried to get someone because she didn't understand the concept of what really social cues are, threw our girl in a situation that could have been very bad and she got scolded and ended up getting a big sister because Akane was that kind. They adjust characters past their initial hook, so whether you like it or not, they become something that feels like a character through and through. That's why her throwing a temper tantrum on the swing, learning that another girl's probably joining the crew, you say, okay, it's not going to be like the last time. She's clearly learned, and because Akane's with her, we're not going to set the new girl up on a dangerous date like she did the first time. And I, it's kind of hilarious because Akane can make jokes like, it's almost like she has a jealous girlfriend now. These moments to me are what sell this show. And like I said, there's a lot of good picks from this season that people will bring up, and I think that's fantastic. Enjoy those shows as much as you are. But for me, this this channel is basically me gushing about the shows I like in any given season. And for me, this is the one that truly clicks the hardest. And I mean, nothing's probably ever going to surpass Toradora, which if you've been around the channel long enough, that's my personal favorite romance anime and one of my favorite anime, period. But this show has honestly skyrocketed past like all the romance shows that I've loved and enjoyed and talked about on this channel in the past few years and that's not me exaggerating I really have no reason half the anime community aren't even talking about this show I gain nothing by saying this this is my true honest feelings and I'm loving my time with this show this is a 13 episode anime so we have four more episodes to go before we have to say goodbye and hopefully we get some form of more romantic confession before we say goodbye but thoughts feels yourself down below on this wonderful episode leave a like if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new around here of course ring that bell so you can get notified when I upload more Yamada Kun on the channel. And as I mentioned, we do have a full live reaction to this episode available on my Patreon. And while you're there, you'll also get a video shout out. So today we have Ricardo Pelago, Purple Kush, Stephen Thomas, and Taco Tuesday. So I appreciate the support, everyone. Please take care and have a good one.